into political careers. We'll speak with the academic coordinator of the program, Dr Andrea Carson, a little later in the program. Of course, Andrew, women make up, you know, 50% roughly of the population. Well, in fact, I think it's a bit more now. A bit more. Yeah. Well, and we're, we're, particularly in Australia, very poorly represented in Parliament and, in fact, Compared to uh, global statistics, we're falling. We are 49th in the world now uh, in terms of female representation. OK, so as a woman, Jo, mm. yeah. does it hold any attraction to you? Politics? Mm. Um, well, I don't... I, w I would say no personally, but not because I'm a woman, um, just because I don't have that desire. But I do think that women p face a particular scrutiny their male colleagues don't face. But, and throwing that, of course, um, when you want to bring up a family, mm. uh, clearly the difficulties for the women are greater than for a man. As with other careers, but I think that that's a structural uh, change that perhaps needs to happen and a cultural change where perhaps the men need to uh, pick up more of that role to allow for the women to, uh, to flourish more. Well, certainly accentuated in Canberra uh, for federal politics, given mm. that you have to spend so much time away yep. from your family. It's a very demanding job but that's the same for for those men in politics at the moment who are fathers that's something that they face as that well. is true all right we'll have a look at that a bit later this hour let's see how the weather's looking now let's return home and to that story we we're discussing at the top of the show that less than a third of Australian politicians are female now that number is falling by world standards Australian women are poorly represented in politics despite making up more than half the population well, a new program launched by the University of Melbourne last year looks like it could flip that trend on its head, having already propelled a number of women into political careers. Behind the program is political scientist at the University of Melbourne, Dr Andrea Carson, and she joins us now from Melbourne. Thanks very much for your time. Dr Women are poorly represented in Australian politics. How does this Pathway to Politics program help to address that? Good morning, Joe. Yes, the program that we've got at the University of Melbourne out of the School of Government and generously funded by the Trawalla Foundation is there to try and teach women the skills to be able to enter public office. And what we do is we teach them about political parties, about campaigning, about how to network, how to write speeches and, very importantly, how to deal with the media. We've had 25 women go through the program in the last five months and so far it's been running for two years, 25 last year as well, and we've had 16% of those women either pre-selected or elected into parliaments at uh, state and also local government level. You mentioned there how to deal with the media. We've seen that some of the women who have been in politics certainly over the last 10 years or so have faced, I think, a different kind of scrutiny than their male colleagues. Is that something that the next generation also has to steel themselves for or are times changing there? It's a good observation, Joe. You just have to look at what happened to Hillary Clinton in the presidential campaign that's just passed. And studies, particularly out of America, show that women are treated more harshly and perceived differently than what men are. Women also feel this, and it's one of the reasons that inhibit women from wanting to run for office. So, for example, women might be judged more harshly on what they wear and how they compare uh, as mothers and as wives compared to what men do with their personal and family responsibilities. Uh, from what you've spoken, from what you've heard from the women who are taking part in this Pathways to Politics program, what are some of the other reasons, apart from that, that, that hold them back from getting into uh, careers in politics? Well, one of the successes for people to get into politics is to be good networkers and good fundraisers. And women are a little reticent with some of these skills. This is why we're teaching them in the program that they need to understand how political parties work, how to network within those political parties so that they can be pre-selected in seats that are not just the marginal seats or sometimes called the hospital pass, that they have a real chance of not only being pre-selected but being pre-selected into winnable seats. And that's what we're focusing on trying to achieve by giving them the skills to do that with this program. And in gaining those skills, have you seen them become empowered and I guess feel more confident to then uh, face a career in politics? That's a great question. Last week we took over the Victorian Parliament and we had each of the 25 fellows present a stump speech in the Victorian Parliament and they did an amazing job. 
it was fantastic to see over the course of five months the skills that they've gained and how much confidence they had and many of them looked very at home in that environment. Now Australia is falling down the world rankings in terms of the number of women in politics. It's now 49th in the world. While this program is having a lot of success as you say, do you think we need a more heavy handed approach? For example, do we need to introduce quotas? Well quotas work. Uh, across the world, there's more than 100 qu uh, countries that have quotas of some form. And in the last 20 years, because of quotas, the number of women in parliaments has doubled. Australia only has voluntary quotas through the Labor Party, or enforced quotas with the Labor Party. It doesn't have any quotas within formally through the party system, uh, through the parliament. Quotas would work, but uh, it's not enforced with the Liberal Party. Uh, they have targets instead. And it's up to the parties to be able to bring those in. Labor is looking at having 50% representation by 2025. And if you have a look at how it's performed since 1977 when there were no women in parliament, it's well over 40% now. So do you think that the political system itself is to blame here? The way it's structured, is it stacked against women? Do we need to see reform there? I think it's difficult because women often aren't pre-selected into seats that are winnable. Uh, the actual structure of the parliament, uh, we have 50% of the population that are women, but we don't have that represented in the parliament. And quotas is a, a proven way that's been shown internationally to work. What about the counter argument to quotas that women should be elected on merit? Well, the counter argument to that is that it's not merit that keeps women out of the parliament. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thanks very much, Andrea Carson, doctor from Melbourne University, for chatting us, taking us through those issues. Thank you. Thank you.